welcome back. Um, I'm working on a larger project right now and I needed a way to draft an angle onto a onto the wheels of my surface grinder to gar to grind a dovetail. And as I didn't have a uh, radius tangent dresser or even a simple angle dresser, uh, I had to build something. I didn't want to just slide a diamond in a block along a parallel on the angle plate, That's that works too. But I wanted something a bit more defined and refined, for that matter. And mm -hmm. I built this guy in a few hours because, yeah, no drawings, no nothing, just build along. What this is is a sign dresser. It has two pins in here that are exactly 70 millimeters apart. And by stacking gauge blocks below them, you can set every angle that you want very precisely. To allow for adjustment, of course, you loosen the screw here in the back and you can move it up and down to accommodate different sizes of gauge block stacks and of course you can also rotate it for the angle itself. It has a, a ball bearing linear slide in here where the this slider here with the diamond mounted on the end moves up and down. And that way you can dress every angle that you want on a grinding wheel up to maybe 60 degrees. Above that, um, <laughs> it gets a bit hard and you would have to come up with something else because the sign principle gets uh, less and less accurate the steeper the angle you set. But especially um, on a grinding wheel with the very short uh, distance you create your angle surface on, um, precision is not super critical. Um, if you, if the, the whole sign base here is off by one hundredths of a millimeter over this whole distance off the angle, um, on a very short distance it's, <laughs> it's way less, so yeah, should be fine. Uh, this sits directly on the magnetic chuck. Before I tried to have it in the mag in the grinding wise, but that built too high. It was sitting too high off the table, and you would have to crank the uh, the wheel head of the grinder up forever to do your dressing. And that way, it's nicer. So let's go over to a surface grinder and let's dress a wheel. Okay, this is the setup to get the angle dresser to 30 degrees. Um, Sinus of 30 degree is 0.5 multiplied by the 70 millimeters distance it's 35 and I need a 20 millimeter gauge block over here to get some distance to the surface plate so I have 20 and over here 20 plus plus 35 so 55 and you place both gauge blocks that gauge block stacks under the sign pins. Make sure everything is clean. Drop the pins on the gauge blocks and <laughs> lock the lock the adjustment of the sign dresser. And then you can take the gauge blocks out because you don't want to have them in the abrasive grid drain under the, <laughs> the under the wheel. And you're good to dress the wheel. Um, <laughs> dressing the wheel, uh, uh, you use better dust extraction because the grinding, uh, the abrasive grit will get everywhere. <laughs> so I have my my snorkel to get the most of the grit away, and also will use some plastic sheets to cover the dresser. <clears throat> okay, this is my very elaborate way to protect <laughs> the dresser from the grinding grit. Just plastic bag cut open and some magnets to hold it in place. This is not exactly a dangerous operation, but we are running the grinder without the full wheel cover. So take precautions if you do this. <laughs>
There we go. One nice 30 degree tapered grinding wheel. Now I would just have to dress the rear side of the wheel square to the table and I can grind a prismatic uh, way or a, a side of a dovetail or whatever I want to grind. With the dust extraction directly behind the dresser the mass is also reasonable. But still dressing a wheel to a shape is <laughs> A horrendous mess. Uh, we have some uh, diaform um, pantograph dresses that work on our uh, young surface grinders and when the guys do <laughs> large profile dressing on those wheels with the diaform, that's, <laughs> that's quite messy. So let's look at the, at the part of this dresser. Okay, here are all the parts for the angle dresser. We have the mounting angle block, the, the sign base, the linear guide, the, the slider itself that moves along with the linear slide and the diamond holder and a few small parts. So let's go through them. The, the main mounting block, this is a, a casting. This used to be the, the movable jaw of my bandsaw vice and I just surface ground it all over, remilled the slot here and milled some support surfaces on the back so I can clamp to it and chamfered it on. That came out quite nice for such a crusty piece that it was before. Um, a linear guide is a size 9 from Ina. Uh, I just scavenged this out of home old uh, semiconductor production line <laughs> as you do. Uh, the, the diamond holder is a piece of uh, tool steel with a, with a cutout that holds the diamond and the top the top of this radius is relieved in the center here so I get a three-point contact. I get contact here, here and against the surface it clamps on, so the diamond cannot wiggle in this clamp. This is the slider, just a piece of tool steel, surface ground, and milled out on the back side to fit the linear guide, uh, or the, the carriage of the linear slide. And the sign base is also a piece of tool steel, milled out the slot for the linear slide, very close fitting. These pins are end stops, so the carriage of the linear guide will not go over. And in the same setup, I drilled and uh, bored two 6mm holes for dial pins exactly 70mm apart to form a sign base that is parallel to the linear guide. That way, with the gauge blocks, I can set every angle that I want. And these threaded holes are so I can mount uh, the sign plate here against the, <laughs> this angle. And I made a few more threaded holes so I can uh, vary, vary the position. Might be handy if, uh, if space gets a bit uh, cramped. This is, the <laughs> this is the washer to mount the sign plate against the, the angle. And this is a, is a sliding fit in the slot, this recess here. And that way it's, a, it's good to clamp and doesn't rotate or something else. Uh, the screw has a bell wheel washer, that's like a, uh, a disc spring. So when you screw when you tighten the screw, you have first to overcome the spring the bell will spring uh, pressure, and then it goes on and locks fully. And then the bell wheel washer acts as a normal washer. But it's nice to have the bell wheel washer in there, so you can uh, give a little bit of preload, and you can still move the sign base very precisely. But have preload and it does not fall over all the time. So that's the reason for the <laughs> disc washer.
So let's, let's put it back together. Start with the linear guide, goes in here. There we go, that's the linear slide. The pins protect the, the slide from falling off. So next part is the, the slider itself it goes over the linear slide and gets screwed down with four M3 screws too. There we go. And we have our angle block with the, the large uh, washer and the screw. Like this. And we have a handle which just screws in like this. And finally the diamond with its holder. There we go. That's the that's the diamond dresser finished, mounted all back together. Um, no, there are no drawings for this thing. I built this in uh, about four hours completely without drawings, just holding parts up against each other and machining along, which is quite fun if you uh, work most of the time after a drawing. But sometimes it's just nice to work along and build something that you need right now. <laughs> so that's the dresser. Um, at the moment I just take a, to protect the linear slide from the dressing grid, I just take a, uh, a plastic bag with a hole punched through it for the, for the diamond and just wrap it around so the linear slide does not get all the grinding grit in it, which would be rather bad. But they are not super expensive, even if you cannot scavenge them, but you have to buy them. Um, Yes, that's the diamond dresser. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.